Hi, it's Gene, retired in Mexico, and we ask one question on this channel, which is, do they write them and sing them like they used to? Now, a lot of people, young and old, they think the old music is better, but I'm not so sure. And today, we're going to complete our countdown of my 30 favorite albums of 2005. So, you know, I always have to do this disclaimer. These are not the best. These are not the best, but these are my personal 10 favorite. And it's a kind of a surprising list. It, it includes uh, live material. It's mostly Americans. Uh, there's a couple of female singer-songwriters in here. It's an interesting, eclectic list. It's got some anthologies of older or classic, classic music, but mostly it's a list of newer albums and newer bands. So let me go ahead and bring this up, my list here. And we'll start with number 10 which uh, I don't have a hard copy of because I'm, I'm I'm, um, I've got it on consignment down at the record shop because I'm downsizing, what can I say? But it's, uh, it's an album that I love. It's uh, Kentucky's My Morning Jacket and their album Z. So this is uh, wonderful stuff. You've got, um, you know, you've got your uh, singles on here. We're off the record and Gideon. It's a really interesting album. I love Jim James, I got to see my morning jacket once, and then Jim James once with the Monsters of Folk. And uh, yeah, big fan of his vocal style and all the musicians in the band. It's a, it's a really good album. Um, some of the songs, I, you know, I remember them when I put them on. So if I look at a song like It Beats For You, I can't think of that off the top of my head, but a song like Wordless Chorus, yeah. That comes to mind immediately, and uh, yeah, I do. I do love this album quite a bit. Z got uh, got good ratings. Uh, most people really liked it. Uh, what was it? Metacritic gave it a ninety. Whew. All music four and a half stars. So this is this is critically uh, regarded for a reason. So I really like that. Coming in at number nine from Austin, Texas. I'm a big fan of the band Spoon. And this is their fifth album, which is possibly my favorite. Uh, it's called Gimme Fiction. And uh, the big single off this was I Turned My Camera On. But this is just catchy little pop, isn't it? And it's got a unique, unique drum sound. It's um, got that poppy little snare that, that some people don't like, but I love it. And great stuff. Um, the opening track, The Beast and Dragon, Adored. Really good, really good. And Brett Daniels is one of my favorite singers. Uh, I'm sorry, Brit. Did I say Brett? Brit Daniel, singular, is uh, one of my favorite singers of the 21st century. Uh, really good stuff. Coming at number eight is the sort of fake British band out of Portland, Oregon, the Decemberists. Yeah, with, with picaresque, if I said that album title correctly and um yeah good stuff uh tracks like 16 military wives and the mariners revenge song you know they do these kind of sea shanty things on here and it's just kind of weird and whacked out it's not everybody's cup of tea but you know i i really when i'm in the mood for these guys they hit all the right spots i just uh, yeah i love it and there's a ton of instrumentation on here so they're definitely trying to combined some uh, very old styles. We're talking pre-rock and roll styles with this uh, indie rock thing, and I think they're very successful at it. Yeah, big fan of uh, picaresque. Coming in at number, are we at seven, I believe? We are at number seven. I have Fiona Apple, Extraordinary machine or extraordinary machine however you want to pronounce it she's from originally born in new york but i think of her more as a californian now and this is a phenomenal album uh, i think i think this is probably her best of the 21st century uh there's quite a background story to this quite a background story uh but i i just love her voice and her weirdness she's a, a very melodic songwriter with a really pretty good, powerful voice. Um, but her piano, I think what I really like about her is her piano chords. 
she just has the strangest um, choice of unexpected piano chords. And if she's not technically proficient, boy, as a piano composer, I don't think she gets enough credit. I, I just, I just love this. And you know, there's a big backstory. Some people prefer the original production that uh, John Bryan did. That album was mostly scrapped, and then they brought in new producers and they reproduced it. And I went back and I listened to the original album, which you can listen to on Spotify on um, YouTube. And I like it. It's good, but I think I actually kind of prefer this uh, re-recorded version. So anyway, people are very divided on that. Uh, either way, she's an extraordinary talent. And uh, yeah, just yeah, just a little, you know, one of those artists that she's just a little off kilter, but not so far out to left field that, that you can't enjoy it. She just gives you those unexpected melodies and chords, and I love it. All right, so these have all been Americans so far, but now we're going to leave the United States and talk about someone you might be surprised that I really like this person. And I got into her before she blew up. I listened to this album a few times. It's the artist M.I.A. from London, uh, also lived part-time in Sri Lanka. This is the, her debut album, Are You Lar, uh, which was named after her father. And uh, I think this has aged well. You know, I think people are going to differ on their opinion on this. Some people are going to listen to it and say, ah, that sounds so 2005. Uh, but to me, it holds up pretty well. It's still unique. She has a completely individual style. Um, she's, um, when I've watched interviews with her, she's kind of a weird cat, you know, but musically, I love her and these singles. Galong or Galong, Sun Showers and Bucky Dunn Gun. Bucky Dunn Gun. I love this. Uh, th this is really unique beats. This is uh, there's no other kind of. You know, I don't even know if you really want to call it. It's this world rap thing, right? And you guys know her pretty well because she blew up huge two years later with Paper Planes, but. Uh, I just love her samples and beats and her approach, and it's fun. This album is fun. Yeah, it makes you want to dance, so good stuff. All right, now we're in the top five. From Duluth, Minnesota, the band Low, and, you know, we lost Mimi Parker last year. Uh, she's so prevalent on this album. This is called The Great Destroyer. And this is just a great set of songs. Monkey, California, Silver Rider. These are some great, great uh, tracks. And it has a moodiness and a melodicism that's just really catchy. Uh, So-called slowcore, they're called. And uh, yeah, I'm a big low fan, but it doesn't mean I like every one of their albums equally. I, You know, when they were... Some of their early albums I've tried to get into, I have a harder time. But this one, I think both Mimi and Alan Sparhawk, her um, husband, uh, I think they're both in top form on this album and wonderful. If you haven't heard the Great Destroyer, I the Great Destroyer, I really recommend this album. I I just think it's wonderful, and it was given to me by a friend of mine. Let's see, it's got. Pretty good reviews, 82 Metacritic. Pitchfork didn't like it very well, but uh, everybody everybody else seemed to like it. So what's new, right? <laughs> but a uh, personal favorite of mine. I'm grateful to my friend for giving me this uh, album. So coming in at number four, uh, like the MIA, might be a surprise to you guys. I, I don't know. I don't know how well you know my taste, but... Coming in at number four from New York is LCD Sound System. Oh, man, this is my kind of uh, electronic dance music, uh, full of wit, uh, funny songs. you got Daft Punk is playing at my house. Funny as hell. And uh, Losing My Edge. Oh, what, 
What a funny song. Uh, you probably know it, but if you don't, it's about being uber hip and having been to, having attended concerts that he was uh, too young to attend, but claiming that he had been to them anyway and that he had every great record ever made. But there's other songs like Tribulations on here, really a, a strong album. And you know what? This is... Um, this has got some rock and roll and punky edges to it. It's really a... Um, Chris Cow gave this one star? That's... Really? Is that true? No, I can't believe that. Uh, wow. Really? That's amazing. But almost everybody universally praised this album. Why not? You can dance, you can rock, and you can laugh. I just think it's a wonderful album. The first two LCD Sound System albums are just great. And this hits all the right spots for me. So, yeah, love it. All right, coming in at number three is one of my anthologies. So let me show this to you. I've got a hard copy of it. And I've had the great pleasure of seeing uh, her in concert. One time, a few years ago, this is uh, Ricky Lee Jones. Let me uh, make sure that I've got this to where you can see it, and it's not being shown off the light. So this is a three-CD anthology of her music, and I think she's just a really strong artist. I like her quite a bit. Uh, so you've got... You've got three CDs in here, and it's not in chronological order, uh, which actually makes this album work. I usually like chronological order, but this got all of her hits on it. Not that she had that many, but of course she blew up in the late 70s with Chucky's in Love. But, you know, then she went on to make a catalog that was less commercial. Albums like... Uh, the Magazine and Flying Cowboys that have really great material on them. And I think this is all you need to own with the uh, up to this point. Now, afterwards, she has made some other albums that I also love. Sermon on Expo Exposition Boulevard and um, one that has a Desire in the title. I can't remember the exact name. But... You know, she's not every everybody's cup of tea, but I love Ricky Lee Jones uh, enough to have bought tickets to go see her in concert. And she's got a great, deep catalog. And like I say, she exploded on the scene. Her first album, her debut, was her most successful. And then it was all downhill from there commercially. But But in terms of the quality of music, it's perfect. And if she has any weak songs... They're not on here. This is a really a great selection. Three CDs of Ricky Lee Jones, and it's it's not too much. Though I will say the third disc has a lot of rarities on it. So really, it's primarily a two-disc anthology. All right, coming in at number two. What's it going to be? We're going to England for this one. And this is Robert Plant. Mighty Rearranger. I did a whole uh, legacy album rack, ranking and songs ranking of him. You know, and it didn't, it didn't do that well, and I'm not sure why, because Robert Plant is combining rock and roll and world music, I think, more successfully than possibly anyone. You know, and he's an old guy, right? He's older than I am. But he's got uh, these wonderful albums, and Mighty Rearranger is my favorite. And you got songs like uh, Tin Pan Valley, not Alley, but Tin Pan Valley, and Shine It All Around, and the title track, Mighty Rearranger, which has got a spiritual theme to it. Yeah, you've got lyrics that are spiritual. You've got world music vibes. You've got... Um, some African instrumentation on here, and it's just wonderful. And it's really well produced. I really like Robert Plant in the 21st century far more than his 80s and 90s output. I, I can't even listen to hardly anything except maybe Big Log and 29 Palms. Those, those albums are so 
80s in their production. Even the 90s albums are sound like 80s production. And then all of a sudden in the 21st century, he started recording really good albums with good audio quality. And I think up to songwriting too. He, you know, he really found himself and hit his stride. And of course, those albums with Alison Krauss made a ton of money for both of them. But it's good stuff. Really good stuff. Uh, the Mighty Rearranger by Robert Plant. Okay, my number one. This is a big surprise. Because it didn't feel right. I'm like, how can you put a live album in your number one spot? Nobody puts a live album in their number one spot. I mean, that doesn't even make sense, right? I mean, there are some good classic live albums, but one of them came out in 2005. And if you read the reviews for this, many people said it was one of the best live albums ever. And I've got it in a pro sleeve here because uh, I take my CDs out of my jewel boxes. But this is, let's see if I can get this up here for you. This is Wilco Kicking Television, double CD. Wilco Kick Kicking Television, recorded in Chicago, where they're from. And this is uh, like a greatest hits album. I, I love this because the energy of this performance is fantastic. There's a lot of songs from their previous album, A Ghost is Born, but they do a, a generous sampling of songs from Yankee Foxtrot Hotel and some older material uh, early in their career from uh, Being There and albums like that. And then they do a couple tracks uh, from their uh, duet albums with Billy Bragg. And I like this where you have this band with all these guys, including Nels Klein. You're doing songs from Mermaid Avenue, but there's no Billy Bragg. It's just Jeff Tweedy singing. And I like that. I like this band doing those songs. Uh, you know, I try to get into Mermaid Avenue. It's a pretty good album, but I know Billy Bragg. I just prefer Jeff Tweedy and... It's just not an, uh, an album that I return to, and volume two I've never even listened to. But to listen to all these songs on here, now if you want an example of how great this is, just play Handshake Drugs. Ooh, it smokes. And um, Nels Klein, great guitar player. So a live album at number one, but you know, I'm trying to be honest, and I'm also trying to use the criteria of what albums I return to. And Kicking Television is a Wilco album that I probably play more than any of their albums, including Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. So this is the one I like to listen to. It, it smokes. Uh, they're on fire. And one of the best live albums ever recorded, Wilco Kicking, Kicking Television live in Chicago. You've got... Um, let me just give you some other uh, tracks on here real quick before we wrap up the video. You've got um, I'm Trying to Break Your Heart, Jesus, Etc. I'm the Man Who Loves You. Uh, the song Kicking Television was a B-side, so they do that. Via Chicago from Summer Teeth. Great song. A lot of people like the song Muzzle of Bees. That's on here. And uh, then they close with uh, four tracks in a row from Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. Did I say Yo Yankee Foxtrot Hotel? I did. It's Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. So, and then they close with a 11-minute version of Spiders. And this is just a terrific album. I highly recommend it. So that's it. That's my top 10. Let me know what your favorite albums of 2005 are. And, uh, it takes me a long time to work on these. Uh, the next one might be 2006, but I'm thinking of, do, of going back and doing 1999 because even though that's not 21st century, so much of that music was played in the year 2000, and I think it still informs everything. So I, I might backtrack and do a uh, 30 favorite albums from 99 and then jump to 2006. But I love doing these series. They're not quite as popular as the uh, reaction videos, but they mean a lot to me. I get a, I get to go through here and 
and really curate what I like. And so we've done the years 00, 01, 02, 03, 04, 05. So that's six years. So we're uh, plowing through the 21st century here. So thanks for joining me on the channel. And uh, I'll put up um, a Spotify playlist for y'all and um, the songs on the uh, end here. Uh, so you can read them. And thanks for joining me. As we say here in Bonita, Mexico, buen dia.